सो द गेट क्वेश्चन इज एच ऑफ एन इज इक्वल टू यू ऑफ एन प्लस थ्री प्लस यू ऑफ एन माइनस टू माइनस टू टाइम्स यू ऑफ एन माइनस सेवन एंड वेदर ए इट इज स्टेबल एंड नॉन कॉजल बी इट इज स्टेबल एंड कॉजल सी इट इज कॉजल एंड नॉट स्टेबल और डी इट इज नॉट स्टेबल एंड नॉन कॉजल सो वॉट इज द आंसर सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सोल्यूशन द वेरी फर्स्ट पॉइंट वी हैव टू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ सो वॉट इज द ग्राफ फर्स्ट यू ऑफ एन प्लस थ्री सो दिस इज एन करेक्ट इन वाई एक्सिस वी हैव एम्पलीट्यूड सो एन प्लस थ्री मीन्स इट वुड स्टार्ट फ्रॉम माइनस थ्री एंड इट विड फॉलो द ग्राफ ऑफ यू ऑफ एन दिस मीन्स इन द पॉजिटिव साइड सो दिस इज हाउ वी ड्रॉ द ग्राफ द प्रिटी सिंपल स्टेप वॉट एवर इज इन द ब्रैकेट इक्वेट दैट टू जीरो एंड फ्रॉम दैट यू विल गेट टू थिंग्स इफ यू पुट दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो यू विल गेट एन इज इक्वल टू माइनस थ्री दिस मीन्स दैट अवर ग्राफ इज यू ऑफ एन दिस मीन्स दैट अवर ओरिजिन इज माइनस थ्री नाउ दिस वॉज फॉर द फर्स्ट पॉइंट Now let's talk about this. So tell me the answer. What would be that? Simple. See, n minus two is equal to zero. This means that n is equal to two. So u of n graph, but the origin would be two. So this is x-axis n, where is two somewhere here, and it would follow the u of n graph. So this is the graph. So this is u of n plus three. This is u of n minus two. Now let's talk about two times u of n minus seven. So put this bracket is equal to zero. You will get n minus seven is equal to zero. This means that n is equal to seven. So your starting point in x-axis we have n. So starting point is seven, correct? And it would follow u of n graph. So this is the graph. Now the amplitude is two. So what we have to do? We have to add this two. Then we have to subtract the graph from this. All right. So this is u of n minus seven. Sorry, it is two times u of n minus seven. So the amplitude here is one one, but the amplitude here is two. Now we have to add this two. As you can see that minus three and uh, minus three, the value here is zero. Correct. So one plus zero answer would be one. So one at minus three. Similarly, one at minus two. Till you will get here at two. Because at two, what will happen? Here at two, the amplitude is one. Here at two, the amplitude is one. When you add both, the amplitude will become one plus one. That is equal to two. So at two, the amplitude is again two. All right. I hope you are getting this. And moving forward, the amplitude at three would be one plus one. That is again two. Moving forward at amplitude four, the here we have one. Again here we have one. So one plus one, two. So this will go on and on up to infinity. Correct. So this is the addition of u of n plus three plus u of n minus two. All right. Now we have to subtract that from this. That is two times u of n minus seven. So how our graph will look like? So let's see. This is our axis. That is x axis. We have small n. Now we have to note that at minus three our value is one. At two our value is two. But this is starting at seven. All right. This is starting at seven. So this all will remain same like at minus three our amplitude is one but at two our amplitude is two uh, so this will remain as it is up to seven because at seven what will happen at seven so suppose this is seven at seven our amplitude is two but at here at seven amplitude is two so this minus this will give me zero again if I move forward at eight the amplitude is two. Here at eight amplitude is two, so this minus this again I will get zero, and at future values like four, five, six, seven up to infinity I will get always zero. The, so the graph ends at six. So I hope you are getting this. At six this is zero. So at six so this is at six what we are getting at six the amplitude is two, but at six the amplitude is zero. So six minus zero answer is sorry at two minus zero the answer is two. So at six the answer is still two. So this is the graph, the final graph of h of n. Now you have to say that it is a stable graph because the answer is not going up to infinity. If it is stable, then the answer is between a and b. Now you have to check whether it is causal or non-causal. So now our task is to find whether h of n is causal or it is a non-causal system. So it is pretty simple. The concept of causal, let's see, output is equal to zero or it is not equal to zero. Output is equal to zero when my t is less than zero. But this is a discrete time. We can say n is less than zero, and n is greater than zero. My output should not be equal to zero. Now the problem is when I talk about n less than zero. So zero is somewhere here, correct? So when my n is less than zero, my output should be equal to zero for causal. But as you can see that when my n is less than zero, I am having some output, correct? The output is one. so you can say that it is a non causal system 
if it is a non causal system and the stable what is the option option is a so a is the right answer so our next question is pretty simple which of the following is a causal system now these are the impulse response a b c d you can see they are the impulse response and the graph is let's see at the first graph h of t is valid for positive and negative side first you should know the concept of causal as i said in my previous slide what is the concept of causal output is equal to 0 when my t is less than 0 output should not be equal to 0 when my t is greater than 0 so in the positive side there should be some output but in the negative side the output should be equal to 0 so at the negative side output is present so it cannot be causal at out uh, at ne uh, negative side the output is present so it cannot be causal at negative side output is still present it cannot be causal at negative side output is zero and at positive side there is some output that output is not zero so you can say that answer b is correct which of the following is causal system answer b why because at negative side output is zero but at the positive side we don't have output as zero as the causal concept says so the next gate question is h of t is given as exponential alpha t u of t plus exponential beta t u of minus t and alpha and beta are real constant this system is stable if alpha and beta first a option is both are positive b option is both are negative c option is alpha is positive beta is negative d option is alpha is negative beta is positive so the first point what i are telling system is stable that is the key point stability concept so what is the stability concept integral minus infinity to infinity mod of h of t should be less than infinity correct if this is the case then you can say that system is stable now what is h of t it is two terms correct so let's split that first term is u of t u of t would be 0 to infinity correct and the term is this exponential alpha t theta the next term we have is exponential but now the range is u of minus t so it would range from minus infinity to 0 and exponential beta t correct now you have to solve this and you have to check whether overall value should be less than infinity if this is the case you can say that it is stable and already they are saying that system is stable so what is the value of alpha and beta so if you solve this you will get e raised to alpha t upon alpha the upper limit is infinity lower limit is 0 you will get here so solving this would you will get e raised to beta t upon beta upper limit is 0 lower limit is minus infinity so if you look carefully what conclusion you can get if my alpha is positive then the infinity will go as it is the like e raised to infinity and this will make the overall value as infinity so this is not we want because our system is stable so alpha should be negative if alpha is negative what will happen e raised to minus alpha t and if this happens then e raised to minus infinity this is equal to 1 by infinity this would be equal to 0 so this is valid so i hope you are getting the point if alpha is negative e raised to minus infinity so what would be the answer answer would be 0 so that's valid because system is stable answer should be less than infinity so i got it alpha is negative so b and d is that option now what, let's talk about beta if you talk about beta what will be the case 0 will go as it is so e raised to 0 answer is 1 no problem that is less than infinity but when we talk about the lower value so if this goes here then it would be e raised to minus infinity again e raised to minus infinity is equal to 1 by infinity that is equal to 0 so yes it would be e raised to minus infinity this means that answer would be 0 again less than infinity so this is also valid so when beta is positive our answer would be less than infinity when alpha is negative our answer would be less than infinity so this is the answer alpha is negative and beta is positive so option d matches that so the concept was pretty simple if you are seeing that system is stable our overall value should be less than infinity and we just tried the trial and error how our value would be less than infinity so in this way you can get the answer so let's look at the next question so the next gate question is h of n is given as 2 raised to n u of n minus 2 now the system is a stable and causal b the system is causal and not stable c the system is stable and not causal or d it is not stable and not causal so the concept that you are applying here is about causal non causal and the concept is about stable and not stable that is unstable so first let's talk about causal or not so the first point let's draw the graph in x axis we have small n in the y axis we have the amplitude so what will happen 
so at n is equal to 2 our graph is valid so because it is u graph so how to plot that again i have said that put that bracket is equal to 0 so n minus 2 is equal to 0 so n is equal to 2 you have to draw the u of n graph and the origin should be at 2 so at 2 is our origin but this amplitude this uh, term is multiplied so this will lead to the power of 2 so this would be some graph all right if this is the graph then you can say that it is causal why for causal the concept is output should be equal to equal to 0 when my t is less than 0 so for the negative side you can see that our output is equal to 0 so yes it is a causal system so option d and option C are eliminated. Now the answer can be A and B. So let's talk about the stability concept. Stability concept is because this is a discrete time, we will use the summation. Summation minus infinity to infinity h of n, that is the mod value of h of n, should be less than infinity. If this is the case, then you can say that the system is stable. Now you can see that h of n is this and the range is between 2 to infinity and the term is 2 raised to n. Now this is because of this u of n minus 2 it is valid from you can see 2 to infinity correct and if this is the case and the term is 2 raised to n then the answer would lead to infinity why because you will add like 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 4 up to 2 raised to infinity so addition of this all of this 2 raised to infinity means it would tend to infinity so the overall value is infinity so it is not stable because for stability the value should be less than infinity so you can say that the answer is b it is causal but it is not stable so friends agar aapko meri video pasand aa rahi ho then do like this video share with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel to milte hain agli video mein till then take care this is shrenik jain peace out